Hi, this is Julian from AWS. Welcome to episode 10 of my podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos. In this episode, I will cover some latest announcements from AWS and I will also share some interesting resources. Let's get going. Let's start the news with the regional expansion. So in the last few weeks, we deployed uh, AI services to additional regions. So you can now use Amazon Comprehend in South Korea, in Tokyo, and Mumbai. You can also use Amazon Forecast in South Korea, and you can use Personalize in South Korea. So pretty big week for South Korea users, right? And uh, remember, these services will probably come to your regions as well. Keep asking, okay? Uh, the more people are asking for them, the more chances you have that they actually get deployed. So get in touch with your AWS contacts or just keep yelling in the AWS forums or just yell at me on Twitter if you like. Um, now let's look at some features that have been added recently. The first feature today is uh, a new feature on Amazon Personalize, our managed service to build recommendation and personalization models. So you can now use uh, up to 50 item attributes to build your recommendation models. Previously, you could only use five, so it's a, it's a 10x improvement. So this means if you have wide data sets with all kinds of uh, features, signals, events that show uh, user engagement with uh, items from your, uh, from your item collection, then you can add more in the data set and build more relevant models, okay? So that's pretty cool. We also added a really cool feature on Amazon Polly, our text-to-speech service. It's now possible for customers to get in touch with the Polly team and build a custom voice, a voice that represents uh, their brand or their company, uh, their service, whatever it is you want to showcase. Uh, so let's listen to a couple of examples. And well, the first one is the KFC voice, right? Everybody loves fried chicken. Okay, here it is. Hi, I'm Colonel Sanders, the founder of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Let me tell you a joke. What do you call a chicken crossing the road? Poultry in motion. Got it? Poultry in motion. Food for laughter. All right. Well, I'm not so sure about the joke, but, uh, you know, I'm, I kind of like the chicken. So there you go. Um, that's one example. <laughs> Let's listen to the other one. This one is uh, for NAB, um, an Australian customer. Welcome to National Australia Bank. This is the new voice of NAB, created by Amazon Polly, a service that turns text into lifelike speech. This voice has been uniquely created for NAB providing a consistent experience for our customers whenever they call us. There you go. Well, you can tell it's an Australian accent. No offense, guys. I love you. Um, so now you can um, you can get in touch with us. And, uh, and if you want to build a custom voice, it's one of our capabilities. So that's really cool. Now, am I the one who's going to start the petition for a Jeff Barr voice? Well, I guess I am. So uh, if you agree with me, just Keep tweeting. We need a Jeff Barr voice. Sorry, Jeff. Let's talk about SageMaker. So here I'm not announcing any new features. I'm uh, pointing you at a collection of new SageMaker notebooks that have been put together by the SageMaker debugger team. Uh, as you probably know, SageMaker debugger gives you the capability to inspect the internal state of your machine learning models uh, saving tensor information during training and then um, starting a debugging job or even inspecting the tensors yourself. Well, this is exactly what those notebooks do. So if you go to the GitHub repository for SageMaker examples and you zoom in on the SageMaker debugger folder, you'll find those new examples. And uh, well, I have to point out uh, the uh, tensor analysis and the real-time analysis, the uh, examples here, they are absolutely amazing. They are really, really impressive. Um, there's a BERT example. BERT is a um, state-of-the-art natural language processing model and you can visualize in real-time while it's training how the model is actually training. There's also uh, a CNN 
model, a convolutional neural network example that shows you uh, activation maps, that shows you actually what parts of an image is, uh, is uh, helping the model figure out what class an image belongs to. So this is trained on a, a data sign and this is trained on a traffic sign data set. This is trained on a traffic putain. This is trained on a traffic sign data set. And, uh, and you can visualize the specific parts of uh, the image that, again, are helping the model figure out what class this image is. So this is super impressive work. So I want to uh, uh, really congratulate my colleagues who build this. These are really amazing resources. So if, you, if you've never looked at SageMaker Debugger, uh, please take a look at these examples. They really push the service to, uh, to the limit and, uh, and you will learn a lot. So that's really, really nice. The next item I want to talk about is actually not new. Uh, so maybe I'm the only one who actually missed it. So if that's the case, sorry about that. But I think it just uh, flew under uh, everybody's radar, honestly. Uh, and I'm talking about the uh, NumPy API in Apache MXNet. So Apache MXNet is an open source deep learning framework. And uh, as you probably know, AWS does a lot of work on MXNet. And, uh, and a few months ago, the, the project actually released a NumPy compatibility uh, API. And what this means is uh, you can use MXNet as a drop-in replacement for NumPy. So whatever NumPy code you have, and you know that's a super popular library out there, uh, you can just import uh, mxnet.numpy and just use mxnet instead of numpy. So why would you use mxnet instead of numpy? Well, mxnet is just much faster, right? mxnet was built for speed. It's natively written in C++ and uh, it makes uh, good use of all your CPU cores uh, or your GPU cores if you have a GPU on your machine. So in the, in the launch blog post, there's actually a a tiny test here where, in, uh, where we're multiplying uh, large matrices using NumPy, uh, using MXNet NumPy on CPU and MXNet NumPy on GPU. And well, you can see uh, MXNet NumPy on CPU is roughly three times faster than, uh, than NumPy. And of course, if you uh, throw that matrix multiplication at a NVIDIA GPU, then it's blazingly fast. And uh, all it takes, again, is really just to import MXNet NumPy and set the GPU context in your NumPy calls if you want to use the GPU. So these are really easy modifications. And if you're using NumPy at scale, uh, well, this is definitely worth a shot. So again, not sure why I missed it. Uh, probably was busy writing those uh, reinvent blog posts, but I didn't see a lot of uh, attention brought on this. And uh, I think that's a mistake. You should definitely look at this. Now let's look at a couple of uh, resources that I built over the last few weeks. It looks like I have a bit of an automation obsession these days. So I recorded two videos uh, showing you how to deploy machine learning models. Um, the first one is based on AWS step functions, the state machines that you can define and where you can plug all kind of uh, compute calls using Lambda and using maybe you know, containers if you want. And you can also use SageMaker. Okay, so um, this video will show you how to build that uh, state machine to deploy SageMaker model. And the other one um, kind of does the same thing. Um, I, I train a machine learning model locally on my Mac and uh, using XJBoost. And then I use an open source project called MLflow to deploy that model locally and test it. And then I deploy it to a SageMaker endpoint. And this is a really nice alternative. I, uh, I think this is a pretty convenient library um, if you're working with all kinds of frameworks and if you want to deploy locally or in the cloud. So pretty good. And uh, in a few days, um, I'm also running a SageMaker Tech Talk, so uh, it's already recorded, so it's going to be pretty cool. Uh, I will be covering all the latest announcements for reInvent, doing a very long demo. So, uh, you know, not, not too many slides, but lots of code and, uh, and lots of new features. So uh, you, can, you can join, you can register uh, for free, of course. 
and this is going to be broadcast on um, the 27th okay so there's still time and of course as usual i will put all, all those urls in the video description that's it for this episode don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be notified of future videos there are plenty more coming until next time keep rocking <laughs>